Welcome to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast. I'm Mike Pilak. I'm an actor, screenwriter, and filmmaker who's always looking to maximize my time and potential as I work to break in. In this podcast, I talk to artists of all kinds who have seen success in their fields about their process, habits, and work ethic. Today on the show is Terry Serpico. Terry is an actor who's currently recurring on Law & Order SVU as Chief of Detectives Tommy McGrath. He's been working professionally for a long time with his first major role in Donnie Brasco alongside Johnny Depp and Al Pacino. He's also been seen in films such as Hannibal, Michael Clayton, The Interpreter, and The Purge Election Year, as well as TV shows such as Yellowstone, Army Wives, Cobra Kai, and Designated Survivor. A couple quick things before we jump into the episode. I've talked in the past about myself working on breaking into screenwriting. Please check out blackoilfilms.com slash screenwriting. There you can check out some of the screenplays I've written. I have the first 10 pages of each one uploaded, but feel free to email me at the artist's work ethic podcast at gmail.com. And I'd be happy to send you a full script if you're interested in reading. Last thing before we get into the episode, I would love anyone listening to subscribe, rate, and review the Artist's Work Ethic podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. It really helps us put the show out there for more people to listen to. All right, Terry, thank you for coming on with me today. No, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. So you've worked for a long time in film and TV. What was that first moment when you saw it all come together and and take that step into a professional level? I'm still waiting for that moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose I suppose it was uh, is it was like '97 when I shot Donnie Brasco. It was my first major film. I got out of school at a, at a SUNY Purchase in '89. Was coming up on that, you know. I'd I'd been plugging away for a number of years and kind of laying the groundwork. I had been through a few agents and managers. I had been, you know, picked up and dropped and picked up and dropped several times on my head, I guess. I had I was ten and bar. I was, you know, uh, making a living doing that, and had gotten to the point where it was like, you know what, fuck this business. I'm not I'm not doing this anymore. This is just, you know, my heart's really not in it. I'm just gonna go raise little monkeys on the beach. I'd, I'd gotten to a point where it was like, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm not really drawn to this any longer. It's just, but yeah, I was still in it. I was still auditioning. I was still kind of had my fingers in it. And then this, then Donnie Brasco came along and I got booked, you know, playing this, uh, this, this small co-starring part with Al Pacino and Johnny Depp, which is a nice way to start. Sure. Um, and I thought, you know what, I, I came to this city to pursue this if i leave now if i leave this industry then everything that i've invested up to this point i'm going to lose all of that investment i'm not going to get anything for it my decision to to become an actor was somewhat unconscious um when i was in high school it just kind of happened that way and i started looking for theater training programs out of high school but I had made the decision to come to New York and to pursue acting. And if I drop it now, then I just drop it, and then I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to live with the cancerous what if. Yep. From then on, from that point, from that show, from that movie, from that job, it, it I think that to me was one of the first rungs on the ladder. You know, those those first ones are, are just okay. Um. I'm here. I'm gonna tr- I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try it. And yep. then it's like, oh, okay. I booked a soap opera. There's a there's a wrong. And I've you know I've I've had some auditions for Law and Order. Well, there's a wrong. Um, but this was the first one that really kind of said, oh, okay, let's do this. What's something you know in in your career? Maybe thinking about those rungs and and those some of those first early wins that you know maybe you went above and beyond uh, you know maybe you put in that extra work or you know did that extra thing what what would maybe be an example of something like that 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 you might have done that that kind of separated you from your peers well i i i think one of the things that happened as a result of that job of donnie brasco was that i met the stunt coordinator on that job 
George Aguilar was a stunt coordinator and he's a big stunt coordinator. He's done a lot of work over the years and continues to do so. And uh, the stable of, of men and women that he worked with, the stunt crew that he worked with, um, has also spawned several stunt coordinators over the years. George is a special dude. But um, when he saw me on that that movie, getting my ass kicked, and he's like, you know, hey, you get your ass kicked pretty well. Give me your resume. I'll get you some work. Um, and he booked me on on just about everything that he could after that. And so for several years, I worked as a as a stunt player. But what I found was that there was this niche, this little space in between, uh, of actors that can do stunt or stunt players that can act. And so there was this kind of little little alleyway there of overlap that I was able to to exploit. Well, not conscientiously exploit, but it you know it 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 came to me that it's like okay, well, I booked stuff that was gen were, were stunt contracts, but I ended up with like speaking lines, you know, with Nick Cage while we're trying to cut some guy off a railing in in Bringing Out the Dead or. You know, in 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 well, in big movies, uh, or you know, with with I had a little scene with Joaquin Phoenix in in Frequency because he's lowering me out of a burning building, and it's like I'm not going to say nothing. And so for those years when I was working as a stunt player, I was also learning the industry. I was behind the velvet ropes at that point. Um, I was learning what it was like to be on set, the hierarchies, the protocols, how to behave and how to be prepared when your name gets called, how to wait patiently and be prepared when your name gets called to do your job and to do your job without complaint, to do your job. You know, if the Teamsters can show up at 3 a.m. and set up my trailer, then the least I can do is show up and be ready to work. So um, the work ethic that I was I was raised with, um, with a with a military soldier dad and um and being an athlete as a young as a young man translated into being a stunt player and being a team player on these on these big movies where i i learned that it's like just keep working be professional be prepared be on time go the extra mile spend the extra time and don't bitch you know it sounds you, like being 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 open to the stunt aspect really opened, you know, maybe looking back, opened some doors that if you had been closed off to that and said, you know, no, I'm not that guy, I'm this guy, you know, you oh. might not have been able to walk through some of those doors. Oh, absolutely. And and the the whole the whole stunt community opened up a second door to the industry for me. You know, if I was trying to get in the, the front door here, that one was a a a double wide side door. Yeah. That I was able to 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 walk through, and yes, I did embrace it, and I enjoyed it so much. I I mean, the the people that I worked with, this the whole stunt crew, and if they called me today and wanted me to do a job that was nondescript, you know, in the back, I'd be happy to do it. I mean, I'm not going to get hit by cars. <laughs> I'm a little old for that. Leave that for the young guys. Yeah. But you know, I had such respect for what they were doing. And I was learning so much that it was it was uh, it was a real education for me, and it would have been foolish. It never even crossed my mind to say, "Oh well, I don't do this. This is beyond. This is below yeah. me or beneath me, or or that you know, oh, well, I'm not a stunt guy. I'm an actor. You know, it's like no, I'm I'm an actor who's doing stunts. Sure, you know, and the residual income from that is the same as if I was you know doing you know had multiple scenes." And I got to do some really fun stuff. You know, I got to play cops and robbers and shoot guns and have squibs explode on my body and drive fast and drive close and jump off of shit. And, you know, I got to do some really, really fun stuff. God, at one point we had the Brooklyn Bridge closed. It was midnight. The Yankees were in the World Series in town. Uh, and we had the bridge closed to traffic and it's just like this, the city was just like roaring around us because the Yankees had just won this game I forget which, which game it was, but, and we're, we're driving back and forth on the Brooklyn bridge at night. And it's like, how cool is this? Yeah. What New Yorker gets to do this or, you know, having squibs taped to your body and taking gunfire and falling into a, a produce stand you know, for Hannibal, it's like, who gets to do this? This is yep. cops and robbers, you know, it was, it was so much fun and such an education and so humbling and just really uh, appealed to 
the hands-on kind of guy that I am and the work ethic that I I was that I I have within me that says you get your hands dirty, you get in there, you do the work, you carry the pads, you carry this, you do that. You know, if if they need help hauling gear, then you you pick up gear and you help hauling it. Never did it cross my mind that it's like, oh well, no, I don't I don't do this. Yeah. It was like, can I do more of this? Yeah. So we we've talked about some of the successes. What about you know the the rejections that come along in the career? How have you been able to take those, absorb them, and just continue with the work and turn it around and and keep driving forward even in the face of those? You know that's a, that's that that's a great question, and it's one that I think every actor um, has to answer at some point. And my best answer is that I've just been kind of too dumb to recognize that I should have been doing something else. <laughs> I don't, you know, maybe, maybe not that it's, it's, I've. I, I know, I know the feeling, I know the feeling of, of, is, am I, am I doing the right thing here? Am, am I doing it? And, you know, I mean, yeah, there have been moments when I've been self-aware enough to say, you know, what am I doing this for? Yep. You know, uh, is the return enough? Do I need this enough? And I've never been the the type of actor that's like, oh my God, I must act. I have to have this. I've always been like, well, if geez, if I could do something else, I would. But I was I was a terrible roofer. Um, you know, not a particularly good carpenter. Uh, I loved it, but you know, it was. This was what I I ended up doing this is what i chose to do and once i was in it i was like oh well this is what i'm doing i'm not sure i've ever really had that conversation with myself about oh well geez terry you know this is a lot of rejection in this industry and you know how are you going to handle that and it's like well i guess i've always been pretty confident in my abilities i think i've just had a healthy relationship with rejection mm -hmm. uh or with with the no because in this business, you you know, you hear no without ever hearing it. You hear yes yeah. occasionally. You never hear no. You just don't hear anything. Yeah. You know, you just get ghosted basically. Yeah. And I've always just thought, okay, well, if they didn't choose me, it's because they chose someone else. It's not because they didn't think my work was good or they didn't think I was worthy of it or they didn't think that I could fit into their world. They just chose someone else to do it. And I, I suppose I've always had that that kind of uh, either a healthy relationship with that or just a, a blissful ignorance. I'm not sure which. I was going to say, I think that's so true. I, I've been on the other side having made a couple of short films and, you know, when, when I'm casting them and I'm watching however many self-tapes, you know, and... Mm -hmm. There are great actors, you know, great professional working actors. And sometimes you just go with one and not the other simply because it, yeah. not because they were any better or worse. It just fits the vision, you know? Right. And so. I, I, I suppose I've always just kind of had a, an intrinsic understanding of that, whether it's been conscientious or not. I, I've understood that it's like, okay, it's, if, if, if it ain't me, it's just, it's just someone else, Yeah. you know? And I did get to a point in my career career where i realized it's like okay there are a lot of a lot of sharks in this pool i happen to be one of them and all of them can do the job all of them are going to do the job very well if i'm up for you know some cop somewhere and it used to be you'd go into self you know you go into auditions face to face and you'd see the other guys in the waiting room and you're thinking any one of these guys can book this and do a great job and I'm happy for them. I hope it's me. But any one of us is capable of doing this. So it was never, uh, you know, once once I kind of got into it as a career, um, it was never, uh, well, they they just don't like me. It's There must be something wrong with me. There was a period of time when I thought, what is the intangible that I'm missing? You know, if I'm not booking things right now, is, is there an intent? Is there something that I'm not, I'm not doing in the auditions? Am I not committed? Am I not, you know, so I, I buckled down and I just, I, I prepared more. I tried to be better prepared. I tried to, and what it came down to over, over years, and I'm still learning this lesson is just how to let it go, how to do the work, 
how to do what I do to do my interpretation, to trust my own instincts, to trust my own uh, impulses mm -hmm. in the moment, to allow myself to just be free and explore the material as I'm doing it based on my preparation mm -hmm. and based on the choices that that I am going to make based on what my interpretation of this character is instead of trying to figure out what is it that they want what do i think they want yeah i've given up on on that and it's taken me a long time to learn that lesson but i think i finally learned it is that it, if you're sending me the audition then you want my interpretation you want my take and i'm going to give you that and if you don't want that then you'll find someone else who would be perfectly capable of doing it but i'm doing what i do and I'm capable of taking direction and changing it and and being really flexible, but this is this is what I'm this is what I'm showing you that I'm I'm gonna do with this. How important would you say that that patience, persistence, perseverance, those kind of like P buzzwords, how important are they to to a successful career in the arts or any sort of creative endeavors? You know, I, I feel like you've you've got to be patient and persistent. And just like keep driving forward, you know, would you say in your experience, whether for yourself or people around you, that's been a, a really driving force for them? I think I think you have to employ all of those things as well as professionalism to add another P word. <laughs> um, patience. Yes, you have to you have to you have to believe that even if you can't feel it, the the plates underneath you are constant in motion there's and that the that the the universe really does want to give you what you want what you desire and so you have to be patient and you have to you have to believe you have to have faith and you have to have have certainty that things are happening even though even if you can't see them so be patient uh, persistent yes continue to plug away continue to do the work keep keep plugging away stay at it stay continue to be patient continue to to believe be persistent of course continue to to work at the very best of your 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 capacity be professional do your self tapes to the very best of your ability do your audition work at the very best of your ability when you book a job show up on be professional be professional be kind be considerate be conscientious be aware of what's going on around you. Be prepared. Be a, an excellent team player when you're when you're there on set because work begets work. People want to work with people that they work with before that they know they can count on to do the job and to be a good presence on set. To be someone that they want to spend time with that they know is not going to be a problem. They know is not going to cost that production any money beyond what they're being paid. That they're not going to be a liability in any way. So it's 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 the professional aspect that you have to take very seriously as well. This is my job. I do my job well, and I do my job not just when the camera's rolling, but everything that leads up to it and surrounds it. So yeah, all of those things apply to to a life in the arts, and the persistence and the patience are certainly things that you have to um, have in abundance because it's not. It's not a career choice. It's not a life choice. It's not a lifestyle that you can just kind of do. I mean, as a performing artist, you know, as a visual artist, I, you know, I can, I can, I can write or I can paint or I can draw or I can do these other things that, that can be singular. Yeah. But generally as a, as a performing artist, the element of performance requires an audience. Yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can do monologues in the privacy of my very own home, but it doesn't quite have the same pop, you know? <laughs> and, and nor am I going to. I'm not. I'm just not going to perform <laughs> Hamlet for myself. That's just not going to. Um, so yeah, it, 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 in order to have a career in the arts, you do you do have to be patient, and you do have to have to have all of those those p words. Because when the opportunity comes along to to perform, um, you want to be ready and you want to be in a good mindset and have your heart ready to go. For sure. Anything that you want to plug or mention before we wrap it up here? Uh, did I mention how much I love my wife and how great she is? I think before we jumped uh, on, yes. 
Well, okay, well, before we talk, okay. We could plug her recently, for sure. Recently got married, got married this past June and, and just still in, in that joy bubble. Um, no, right now um, I'm recurring on Special Victims Unit on Law & Order um, as Chief uh, Chief of Detectives Tommy McGrath. Um, it's been a little while since I did an episode. In fact, the last episode that I did was part of a trilogy one of the episodes of which my my wife Katia and I actually got story by credit on. Yeah, we were which credited is awesome. with with having having uh, having brought the story and elements of the story that became the episode into the producers. So we were we were fortunate enough to get the story by credit on that. And I think the, they they want me back for another couple episodes before the season uh, finishes up, and I will probably roll over into the next season. Um, you know, as the as the chief of detectives, I'm I'm Olivia's boss, you know, on the show. So uh, there's that. Uh, you know, career wise, I just I continue to be in it. I continue to to apply all these things we've been talking about in terms of uh, professionalism and perseverance and patience and and a desire. I have an ongoing desire to do this. So uh, I continue to move up the ladder every time you Cody and I were just having the discussion this morning it's like every time I I get another rung up uh, there's there's more rungs it's a long ladder <laughs> yeah so there's always there's always something to strive for I, I I hope never to get to that point where I'm like okay I'm good yeah. you know I'm Yertle the turtle sitting all the way at the top you know we all know how that went for him uh <laughs> I've also um, just recently been talking with one of the one of the networks about uh, directing, continuing to direct. I've directed some some episodes of a show that I did several years back called The Inspectors, and uh, I'm looking forward to maybe getting an opportunity to direct some of the some uh, some primetime TV. Awesome, love so that. Looking forward to that. Fantastic. Sounds great. Just. Uh, Finding all kinds of ways to make a living in this industry because it's a hard industry to make a living. For sure. Well, Terry, thank yeah. you for coming on with me today. It has been an absolute pleasure being here, man. Thank you so much for wanting to have me. That's 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 really cool. Thank you so much for listening today. Please subscribe to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, and please rate and review the show. Follow us on Instagram at the Artist's Work Ethic and check out theartistsworkethic.com.